oh, now we're recording. This is your opportunity to share. Please let us know how it went. Uh, so who wants to go first? Um, I don't know. Leon, what are you doing? What are you doing, Leon? I got you, Leon. She's just a kid, with, so a kid with a new toy. She's got a light, yeah. <laughs> All right, so who wants to go? Since everybody's all right, I'll go. So shy all the time, I'll, whoa, go ahead, Denise. Oh, I was going to say, I joined, I had no idea what it was going to be like or what to expect, but I learned a lot today. So I just want to thank you. It was really great Woo. and fun. So who Which would group were you with? She was um, with Joe and Leon. Joe and Leon, all right. The family's getting bigger, guys. We're going to have to get a bigger car. All right. <laughs> so Rick, minivan. <laughs> in ours we talked a lot about the differences between licensing again just because there were newcomers um we talked about fun stuff to engage teams um to get them to be more open uh we talked about um well we talked about different things uh gosh now i'm blanking my daughter that's all right you got a team to help me you. sorry team members. Team members help out. take it okay. away denise ah. <laughs> we talked about sort of now we can give somebody else a chance I mean, i'll jump it. in for her because jacqueline actually helped me she sent me a course on udemy uh to help me out with a certification and we basically people have more questions on uh, what certifications they should get compared to others and what, what was the best track um, for what they wanted to do with their career. And it helped me because uh, I, re I got a couple websites and I need to look into them to really uh, plan out what I'm going to do and what certifications I'm going to get. And I have it all written down and it's going to be good. Uh, yeah, I got some good information. Speaking of, uh, so Rick and Elu, um, the class was, or the guys were looking for some um, information on not just the certifications, but like when they're going to we're going, when we are going to offer those certifications. Um, so if we had some kind of calendar or something like that that we could share. Uh, absolutely. Oh, Go ahead if share. I could suggest, um, if if it's not dependent on a calendar and you're looking for a certain number of people to join the class. I don't know if it would have a negative impact that I'm not thinking about, but having a, you know, uh, three out of five are signed up or need two more, something like that. So we have an idea of, are we waiting for a lot of people to join or is there just that one person? Because then maybe that one person who was thinking about it, but didn't see it ready might actually sign up for it if they know that it's, it's that close to getting the class going. I like it. Thank, thank you for the suggestion. Um, just Perfect. to let you know, we do have a cow that's on the first of next month, I believe. Is it the ninth. first? The is ninth. It, is it ninth? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I have the second here. That's my my calendar is not right either. <laughs> but that <laughs> one is is um, right now full. So I mean, you could actually attend. So there are, there's openings there. All right. Awesome. Anything else? From the, uh, I guess we called you guys the beginners, intermediate, you know, anything else from the beginners, intermediate? Um, I want to say that, like, I learned a lot today, um, especially with the transparency with, you know, project management slash agile. I mean, that's like my biggest concern because trying to transform different companies into agile, if they just understand, like, that is the door that needs to be opened. And I think because that there's such, um, there's so much fear that's like a, as far as change, right? And, you know, I think that someone brought it up. I'm not sure if it was Jacqueline that, you know, like when you're looking into like the job descriptions, they're wanting both. They want a project manager. And I think it was Maureen. I know that Maureen, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that right now she's kind of like more of like in a project management role, but I just love the transparency of trying to define what agile is and what, you know, it's not going anywhere. It's just kind of getting people to catch up to the change. So that was more of like one of my concerns. It's like, you know, the majority of like these 
project coordination, like, you know, management roles, I want to progress into agile more instead of like taking a step back and falling back into that waterfall method. So thank you again today. Awesome. I love this group. Uh Thank you too. All right, so we're gonna leave that group and we're gonna move into another group. The advanced team, anything you wanna share that you guys learned? All right, that was good. I like that. I like that, right? That's, that's a quiet, <laughs> yeah, like, peaceful mind. <laughs> I can, I can start, and then thereafter, the other team members are joining. <laughs> we we actually talk about psychological safety, and whether we needed to do it every time we do a retro, and we have some interesting um, discussion based on. Um, it needed actually to be done depending on the maturity of the teams. So if the teams was a high, highly matured, so we can do it on a occasional basis, like a check-in. And then we, we had also some interesting um, addition based on happiness check, simple checking. And then we also talk about working agreements. How do we work? Uh, in terms of working agreements, whenever a new Scrum Master join in, whether ne- we needed to review the working agreement. Yeah. If anyone of the team members want to jump in, please feel free. <laughs> yeah, we also talked about the rule of happiness and uh, the, the, the rule of the majority, uh, some kind of dysfunctions that can happen. So the happiness, um, the, uh, the, anyways, these, these are kind of dysfunctions that can happen in a team and um, make a kind of hypocrisy establish itself and you have all the symptoms of a psychologically safe team that is absolutely not safe. And uh, we had a couple of concrete coaching cases. One of them was from Godwin, was super interesting. We talked about it the longest, um, where um, it, it took a lot of reflection and um, there was a lot of sharing also around Dr. Marquette's um, leadership um, um, and wisdom around communication and language uh, by Grant and by everybody else. And then we talked also about all the sickness, all the problems that arise from demotivated and disengaged people in meetings and uh, uh, getting them to, to engage and contribute, especially when they uh, when you want them to come on time. And many other topics today, we processed like eight cards or something. I don't know, art? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did go through a lot. We use, we, we're, we're now we're using a clock. So we're not only, we're actually really doing lean coffee and we're putting a clock up on the screen. I'm and, boxing. Uh, and we went through a lot more cards that way. Yeah, so that was today's board. What was the God one one? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this contextual about how do you coach a tech lead? Um, do, you, do you, when a manager or a director asks you, could you coach this tech lead on leadership? How do you do it? Do you instantly pull that person apart and start talking to them? Or do you, as Marwa put it, go back to that manager and actually ask, what do you want to get out of this? What is it that you actually want? And after this, what comes next? And so it brings up a whole lot of, you know, and there was also a divergent view of actually observing that team member to actually see what if you saw the same thing that the director sees? And so if you are also in that mirror of seeing that, what that person is saying, what do you perceive? Do you have a bias about the person or do you just want to go ahead and pull them to speak? And they Ray also threw a little um, plug in the wheel by asking that if you hadn't get, gotten that observation in the first place or didn't get that um, ask from the person, didn't know the person entirely, and you get this same information, information of trying to coach the person how do you then approach it so it gives us a whole lot to talk about good question uh, and, and i forgot we also have uh, worked a little bit on one of the character traits of one of our uh, characters in our in our story in the book we're writing in the paper we're preparing for the conference mm-hmm. much and uh, she's extremely anal about uh, time boxes and uh, timers and pomodoros and that's it and um we have something for Coach Leon. 
and I know he's really excited to get into it. <laughs> it, involves, <laughs> it involves impro theater, Leon. Yeah, he looks excited. Yeah, he looks very he excited. He looks excited too. Yes. Yeah, you, can, you can see how excited he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pause a second. Do we have anyone else from the app team here? I'm looking around. For some reason, either they're still in the app or I don't see them here. Osaba? And who else is out there? Anything you guys want to share? Leon, but not yet. From the app team, anything you guys want to share? Yeah, we're, uh, I, I, I can talk to you a little bit. We're, um, now that we've done our presentation, we're getting ready to release our, uh, our latest version of the app. So that'll hopefully be in the store in the next week or so. Um, Rick, so you know that Alfredo will probably be in touch with you to make sure that we can get that done. So please be, uh, aware of that, that that's coming. And then we are going to go through a regrouping process. And um, anybody that's interested in joining the team to do the next, the 2.0 version of it, uh, we are going to go through all the sprint processes again and the team buildings. And um, we've got a new sprint backlog that we'll be going through. So we're gonna go through all the ceremonies again and um and and